you stopped going to school and is that what made you say, you know what, I want to accomplish something, let me go to the Navy? Was that how it was? Uh, so it was somewhat related to that. Uh, it was more like I was working. Um, I was, I mean, I had a very, I had a shift, I had mid shift. So I go in at 12 and I leave like at 8 39. So I personally felt like eventually it took a toll on me where I was like, damn, mid shift is kind of boring. But I wanted to go morning shifts, which was like 4 a.m. to like 12 30. But you can have the rest of the day to do so something, I, you know? Yeah. But the problem was that I have a sibling that I had to take to school. I had to do this. Mm -hmm. So eventually I was just like, oh, I can't. I can't do that. I can't go to morning shifts because uh, because that's the same reason to my siblings. So right. then night shifts, I was not going to work night shifts. I was like, hell no, I'm not trying to do that because, you know, you go in, you waste your whole night, but then you have the day off, but then you have to be like, I got to go work at night kind of thing. I don't like doing that. Yeah, or I got to sleep or I got to rest before work. Yeah. So eventually, though, um, I got stuck in mid shifts. Uh, I did what I had to do at work. You know, I was a forklift driver uh, at a warehouse. It was cool, fun, replenishing things. You know, made some friends here and there, you know. Um, but having to waste my whole day, going in in the morning, seeing the daylight till finishing and just being nighttime already. And by that time, it's like things are already closing or they're about to close. So I don't really have much to do, you know. Um, so I got to the point where I really kind of, and the military was always a thing where I kind of really wanted to do. Like, it, it was always in the back of my head. You know, I was like, well, you know, um, what if I did join kind of thing? Like, or, or actually, you know, well, what if I did join after high school? Right. But I never took the time to actually uh, look into it, research about the military, what branch to research, you know, what were my options, what what did each branch offer kind of thing. And eventually, uh, I knew that there was a recruiting office for the Navy and the Marines. And eventually, I had really int uh, had a lot of interest in the, the Navy just because of the sole reason that you could travel. You could do a lot of different things like travel. You get uh, qualifications and certifications that normally a civilian wouldn't get. Mm. For example, I have my certification in firefighting. So, you know, I know different types of fires, classes of fires, you know, what to use to uh, distinguish that fire um, or basically uh, de-escalate the, you know, from eventually getting to a really big fire kind of mm. stuff. Um, you know, especially that we need to know that since we're on big ships, you know, these ships, when I tell you, like, we have different classes, like destroyers, carriers, but the biggest one is a carrier. Mm -hmm. A carrier holds about normally 3,000 to 5,000 people. Um, and take note that that's like a community college and a half worth of people yeah. in there. Like you have a whole like community in that whole ship, but, um, you know, so yeah, it's like, you'll go like months and maybe a year without knowing, like, or like just knowing these certain people. And eventually, like, you'll meet someone that you're like, oh, well, like, when did you get here? Like, and they're like, I've been here. Kind of yeah, that makes and sense. you're like, what? Like, I've never seen you because that's how big the ships are. You know, and normally you can't do much on a ship either. So, you know, you can't really go out. You yeah. can't do this. You're just stuck there. You just go with your friends or go to each other's rooms and just have fun kind of thing. But, um, you know, so that was cool. You know, got training in uh, firearms and stuff. So being able to shoot weapons and um, knowing how to handle them uh, safely. You know, um, it was a very big privilege to do, especially because they were letting us just shoot like just cr yeah. like crazy, which was always fun to do. You know, you get a certain feeling when you shoot a firearm, you know, like uh, you get like a little adrenaline rush going, you know, you're like, Definitely. oh, shoot, you're holding this, you know, you're shooting, you know, going to the firing range, being able to, uh, you know, know the proper ways how to uh, check a gun that's uh, safe, mm -hmm. like for, uh, for uh, safe to be able to handle, making sure there's no rounds in the barrels you know, or in the chamber. Um, so eventually that was really cool to do um, and being able to do um, as well as eventually if uh, you get certain ribbon, uh, ribbons, so, you know, a sharpshooter expert, uh, depending on the firearm that you're shooting. So um, if eventually if you want to get an expert or you want to get a ribbon in a, an assault rifle or an M4 or a shotgun, you know, you could do that on ship. You ask, hey, I want to get my qualification on this. So they're good. I'll start training you on that certain weapon. Um, and then eventually you go to the firing range to, you know, try to get your ribbon and these, uh, they all scale it by points. So the funny thing is you don't go for headshots. You get the most points in the center of the body. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I feel like a lot of people tend to be like, well, the headshots, you know, it's, I feel like that's a whole video game kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people kind of like headshots is the best points and all that stuff. But now nah, normally it's in the body because we see it as a, uh, it's really hard to even try to get the head. Like, mm. you know, why would you aim at the head, you know, when you could just... Aim at the whole body. Aim at the whole body. <laughs> maximize the damage that you can do kind of thing, you know? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so that's how it was. So eventually, 
uh, once I was at the recruiting office, you know, talked more in detail, making sure that I was doing my research so I know that they weren't uh, trying to uh, uh, screw me over kind of thing. So eventually I went, make sure I asked all the questions I could about college, uh, pay me, uh, pay. Um, Did you get a signing bonus by any chance? Uh, b me, I was going to get a $5,000 signing bonus at the time if I were to ship out earlier, but eventually they didn't need more people. So yeah, I uh, ended up canceling that on me, oh, okay. which sucked. Um, so the answer is I didn't get a bonus. I did go in though, um, without it, but regardless of that, I feel like, you know, it was a cool experience. You know? Yeah. Okay. What, um, what are some of your favorite guns to shoot while you were there? Oof. Uh, so when you're at boot camp, you get taught how to shoot uh, a pistol or a handgun, and I think it was a Beretta and a shotgun. Okay. So you get to shoot those two weapons because uh, we're not riflemen first, so we don't do what Marines do, which are mm -hmm. rifles only. Um, so we get taught our shotguns and pistols. So at the end of the day, I feel like the pistol was the funnest to shoot, although shotgun is more, you get more of a kick to it. Yeah. I feel like if you were more accurate with the pistol, you have more of a sense of accomplishment because you're like, damn. I'm a good shooter with this because, mm -hmm. you know, the pistol's harder to shoot because I feel like normally a lot of people tend to think it's easy to shoot a weapon when in reality it's very complex. Right. Because if you were to just shoot two rounds back to back, it's not like a, oh, you're going to definitely hit that same point where you were trying to aim your first round. So you shoot that first round, but if you were to shoot right after it, guarantee you 99% of the time that bullet is going to go like somewhere up, like yeah. corner or downwards. You know, you'd be like, what the heck? Like, where did my other bullet go kind of thing? But that's because of the recoil that people don't... People underestimate the recoil. And they think, oh, yeah, I could just start shooting, like, random. And then you're missing most of your bullets, mm -hmm. you know, because you're just shooting, like, a knucklehead. Um, so, like I said, they teach you the po the right posture and how to grip the, the weapon correctly and being able to uh, land all your shots. So, eventually, I felt more of a sense of accomplishment with that with the handgun, but more of a, a rush and fun, I guess with you could say with the shotgun. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have a big shot on you just shooting that thing, you know? But, yeah. Nice. And what caliber was the handgun? Uh, what caliber? Mm -hmm. So, the it was just a Beretta. So, it was just a, uh, what was it? I forgot exactly what caliber it was. But it was very simple. It was just a... Uh, it was, the, these Berettas are kind of old. So, they're not, re they're not really new. So, because, you know, they, they can't... Those are the really, training ones, Those right? are training, training ones, training, you know? Yeah. So, a lot of them are kind of messed up, or, like, a lot of them are just kind of eh, iffy. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was just a regular, just, uh, just uh, one uh, round, uh, 12, I think, 12-round chamber, or 12-round mm -hmm. mag, with just a simple chamber. And that was pretty much it, honestly. Uh, the really cool, fun part is that I'm pretty sure a lot of people have uh, seen these, like, in a little video somewhere, uh, at one point or another, is where uh, people are, like... Uh, dismantling the weapon and then remat like well, that's something you have to learn. Yeah, right? so that's something we have to learn how to like you know the spring locks and how to you know how to empty out the chamber, how to fix the chamber, how to like you know uh, remove the top part from the chamber and all that's that stuff. Really cool. So it, it it really is cool because then eventually you know you're with your your friends and your homies that you're just like oh shoot I'll, I'll, I'll race you kind of thing yeah. like, let's try to do it. Although one thing I could say is uh, for like anyone that's planning on shooting a weapon or a handgun is eventually when you are shooting and the top part which of the chamber uh really like it Inside gets set backs. back yeah. and it clocks back because it's empty and it mm -hmm. stays there I, my best recommendation is make sure you keep your little flimsy part right here away oh, from that because then it goes back and then people get cut here yes they bro. start ripping when i mean apart. Yeah. it hurts i saw it happen to someone at boot camp so they clocked it back without them realizing that this was still kind of near that. Yeah. So when that happened, it literally clamped onto that whole piece of like little little Chunk of right here. Yeah. And bro, that shit got it got stuck and oh, it was a big deal because now you have to literally clock it back again yeah. so you could take it out. But that hurts in general. So he lost all his little part right here and all that, and he was bleeding like I a bet. lot. And when I tell you it hurts, like he was in pain, he was screaming like. So my best recommendation: keep this part away from the like, little chamber part or the top part of the uh, weapon, because you're gonna regret it as soon as that happens. Like you're gonna regret it. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, that's crazy. So eventually, were you able to get like your be a rifleman, or is that more in terms of another branch? 
know if you were to want to get your rifleman qualification or not that's when uh that's when you request if you're at a ship or on base it doesn't matter you could request it and that's when they'll show you the uh, and train you on that specific weapon that you're trying to get your ribbon or qualification for so if you want it on a that assault rifle or anything like that um you go ask hey i want to get this a qualification for that specific weapon they're like all right cool they'll help you out You'll learn how to study first the parts, the what the chamber, you know, how many rounds it, the magazine holds, you know, what attachments that you can add on it, and eventually they'll make you shoot it, and then that's when you get your qualification. A uh, quick question. How well do these qualifications translate to the civilian world? <laughs> Specifically, you know, more of the, the fire expert one? Like, how well does that translate here now if someone wanted to become, like, a firefighter or something like that? Okay. So, it translates, or it translates good into the civilian world because when you do uh, finish your contract, and eventually you want to apply, like let's say you want to go to firefighting and all that stuff like that, you could always they'll see your record and you can let them know, hey, um, I'm proud, proud military service, Navy. We got our fireman, uh, you know, fire handling uh, certifications going, and. You know, they'll see that and they'll be like, okay, so he has a sense or a common knowledge background of what it is to set off a fire, what how to de-escalate a fire. Prevent fire Prevent fires. Yes, how to extinguish the them. How to um, classify certain types of fires and then what causes them. And what proper solutions to use on that specific fire. So that way it doesn't either escalate the fire or, you know, make things just worse. Wow, that's you know. actually really good. Same thing with different uh, job qualifications. So, for example, I'm in aviation. There's some certifications and qualifications that I have that transfer to the civilian world where it helps out and benefits me if I were to want to get a job in that certain uh, aviation field in the mm -hmm. civilian world.